in Xanadu, Coleridge and the West Country. At the end of December 1796, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, with Sarah his wife, and their infant son Hartley, arrived in the Somerset village of Nether Stowey. Coleridge was seeking tranquility and escape after two very public years in Bristol. His radical lectures and journalism had made him notorious there. His new home was a miserable cottage in Stowey's poorest street. It was found for him by his friend Tom Paul, the nether Stowey tanner. The chimney smoked and there was a plague of mice. But it was in this humble setting and in the landscapes around that a poetic miracle was brought to pass. During 1797, William Wordsworth and his sister Dorothy joined Coleridge in West Somerset. They rented the house called All Foxton a few miles west from Stowey, and soon the three new friends were in each other's company as often as possible. They walked to the rocky shore at Kilve, their favourite seat, and through the beechwoods at All Foxton. They returned repeatedly to Holford Glen, where the sound of a loud waterfall seemed almost to be nature's voice. The two young poets were seeking a new understanding of nature as a powerful teacher and moral presence. Nature was at the heart of much of the poetry they were writing, as was an exploration of human motive and emotion. Dorothy's famous journals, probably begun in her favorite parlor at All Foxton, also described nature with luminous clarity and provided important inspiration for her brother. Most of all, the three friends loved to walk high into the Quantox and to enjoy the effects of wind and weather unrolling over the landscape. I never saw such a union of earth, sky and sea, Dorothy wrote after one Quantock walk. The clouds beneath our feet spread themselves to the water and the clouds of the sky almost joined them. On a November day in 1797, just when the light was fading, they set out on a longer journey to the Valley of the Rocks near Lynmouth. As they walked on, they planned a poem that would soon become Coleridge's ballad, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. It tells the story of a spectre ship that sails from a port like Watchet of the senseless shooting of an albatross and of the wandering mariner's endless remorse for his terrible crime. On another occasion, Coleridge set out alone. Retreating to a farmhouse on the Exmoor fringes near Culbone Church, he suffered what he called a slight indisposition or a dysentery. Three grains of opium quelled the symptoms he fell asleep over a book describing the eastern despot Kubla Khan. And in the opium reverie that followed, he composed in his mind two or three hundred lines of poetry. He was busily committing the words to writing when he was called away by a person on business from Porlock. When he returned to his table, he was mortified to find that the rest of the poem had vanished from his memory, like the images on the surface of a stream. Kubla Khan has become one of the most celebrated poems in the language, an extraordinary vision of an imagined paradise and a resonant symbol of the creative artist struggling to transcend a fallen world. The poem draws on the immense range of Coleridge's scholarship, but it also reflects the lonely and mysterious beauty of the Exmoor landscapes surrounding him at Colbone. By the early months of 1798, both poets were writing more fluently than ever. In Frost at Midnight, Coleridge pictures his infant son cradled by the cottage fireside. Frost descends over the sleeping village and icicles form on the dripping eaves. In another poem, written in Tom Paul's Lime Tree Bower, he exalts the meaning of nature and friendship. A stream of lyric poetry flowed from Wordsworth, much of it celebrating humble lives in simple language. 
William Hazlitt heard some poems read in the park at Old Foxton and immediately felt the sense of a new style and a new spirit in poetry. Coleridge and Wordsworth published a collection of their poems, including The Ancient Mariner, in an anonymous volume called Lyrical Ballads. The critics were unimpressed, but Lyrical Ballads is now revered as the cornerstone of English Romantic poetry. The high-spirited days at All Foxton and Stowey were over too soon. Rumours arose that the poets and their friends were Napoleon's spies planning for a French invasion. A Home Office agent even tracked them to the beach at Kilve. Their local reputation was damaged beyond rescue and all Foxton had to be given up. By September 1798, the house was empty and Quantock's airy ridge was already receding into memory. Wordsworth soon settled in Westmoreland, while Coleridge, increasingly the slave of opium and alcohol, wandered the earth like his own ancient mariner. In his last years, he found refuge in the home of a London surgeon and died there, aged 61, in 1834. The power of their poetry and the beauty of the Quantock Hills have remained for us today enduring reminders of extraordinary months of friendship and creation that would never be recaptured.